Thanks for listening to Kentucky Sports Radio on Talk Radio 1080. So we got John Calipari on the line. I, I told you I was going to do that. And we're playing. We're no playing train because apparently, John, you love train. Your daughter told us about you liking train. Are you are you proud of that? I like Barry Manilow. You proud of train? Well, I like it, but that's a song between my wife and I. So when I hear it in the car, I play it loud. I dial the phone, and she hears me. <laughs> and I don't. We don't speak. We. She just listens, and I hang up the phone. Oh. Everybody wonders why I listen to that song. That's that's. Don't you you know you have a song with your wife? That's our song. I don't know what why we did it, but we both like it. You guys got married, obviously, and, and I'm guessing you danced at your wedding. I don't know how long ago it no. was. What song did you dance to? No, no dancing, no dancing. What? And, uh, no, we're not we're not dancers either. One, my my wife dances dances like Elaine used to dance on the on the Seinfelds. That's so the, so do I. No one's asking you to to bust yeah. a move and do break dancing, John. Do you, do? you dance with your thumbs up. I, I look. I dance with the, the overbite, and I bite my lip with my no, teeth. Really? It's ugly. Oh, it's terrible. Oh my God. Well, let me ask you this: How did you get on this show? How would they even think about letting you on this show? It's the dumbest move Matt Jones ever made. You know Matt a little bit. Um, I have no idea. Look, he needed people. I think he had ten days, and I, I think he went through everybody he knew and liked and respected. And when he was done with all that, he had another day to fill, and he called me. And he went through about four people, and then he got to you. But here's what I would say to you. Um, you may steal the show because he is a lawyer with a bad voice, and but the fans <laughs> love him. But, but yeah, he's but a lawyer with a bad voice. You're listening to me. I I'm a redneck, and I, I realize in this state it's okay because we're all the same. But uh, I've got a nasal voice. You Reggie Miller's voice. What if you ever watched the NBA Finals? Are you listening to Reggie Miller's voice? What do you think of that voice? Well, he, he you want to have something different than everybody else. You know, a lot of these, <laughs> a lot of these young guys going on ESPN. They all sound like the same guy. If I didn't listen or watch it and I listened to the guy talk, I would think it's this guy or that guy. You know they're what? Like they, they're like uh, they're like machines up there. Yeah, you want to have somebody something different. So if if one of my sons ever uh, is dating a girl that other people don't find attractive, which I think is terrible, that every single girl is attractive. However, all I'll say is that son, it's okay because you want to do something different. You want to, don't want to be like everybody else. Cal, we've got to talk about forty and zero. Most coaches would have backed far, far away from that. And if I were to write, in my job, 40-0 should be a goal for this team. I'd get a call 7 a.m. from that coach, as I've done, uh, <laughs> I've gotten from a few coaches over the years. Don't write that. Don't write that. Well, it's too late. I've already uh, written it. Let me tell you where it started. And this is, this is uh, when you throw something at your team, and they get you to think in a way you've never thought before. Okay. Uh, 1995, um, I have a team meeting with our team. That's, we had a good team. Kentucky had the best team. Kentucky had 11 NBA players on a team. Uh, they were number one in the country that year. But I had a good team. I had Marcus Camby, Edgar Padilla, Dante Bright, Dana Dingle, Carmelo Trevieso, Tyrone Weeks. I mean, we had six guys that were pretty good. Yep. Um, and I said to them, what do you want to do this year? Where, where do you want this to go? And Edgar Padilla said, let's win the national title. Let's win the national title, which <laughs> I was happy about because I never worry about league. Like even this year, everybody's – you know, bad year. Well, we finished second in the league, and if you care about the league, we finished second. Right. I mean, but I don't worry about the league. That has nothing to do with what we're doing, whatever league I'm in. Yeah. So, as we said that, I love the fact of what Edgar said. But then Tyrone Weeks followed it up with, well, let's go undefeated. And I, I go, what? <laughs> we open up with Kentucky. they got 11 NBA players. Our second game is Maryland. Our third game is Florida. We play this Wake Forest team. I think they had a kid named Tim Duncan on it. Heard of him. Played Georgia Tech with Stephon Marbury and Matt Ape, um, Matt Harpering. Uh, Harpering. We played Syracuse with John Wallace and so, uh, Southern Cal and North Carolina State. Uh, we played Memphis. We played Jeez. Louisville. And this dude's talking undefeated. What are you, out of your mind? <laughs> you need to be drug tested. So he ruins the meeting, and we leave. And I said to my staff, this kid's out of his mind. Well, we won our next 26 games. We ended up 35-2. and two. When we were 22-0, and 0, they talked about us being the next team to win every game in a season. And my point is, why can't you think that way? Now, by thinking that way, three different times, my teams have almost done it. That team, the team at Memphis, and the team two years ago that won the most games in the history of our sport. Right. 38 games. Now, only one, I take that back. One other team got 38 games. Who was that? 
I don't know. That's Duke? my other Memphis team. Oh, okay. My other Memphis team. So my point being, why not? Now, we open up, we're going to have Michigan, Michigan State with everybody back. We could get boffed our second or third game, whatever game that is. It doesn't matter. It's what you're striving for. And then you, you, you're marching forward. I mean, uh, two years ago, we wanted to win every game. We lost in Indiana. You know what that did? That got us right. That game flushed out a lot of garbage and got us right. But why not chase it? Everybody says it can't be done. Let's go for it. Yeah, because all that's going to happen is if you guys lose, and it's, it's an if, if you guys lose, all, it's going to be so much worse at least the outside perception. Ah, look at Kentucky. You guys could be thirty and zero. Look at Kentucky; they're thirty and one. Losers. You know, you set the bar so high, people will will be so happy if you don't reach it. But I'm guessing you're not thinking about not reaching it. You're thinking about reaching it. No, either way, it doesn't matter. It's chasing it. It's it's all that how you prepare, what you're doing. There are things that happen uh, in games that you have no control over, and things happen and so you you keep marching on i'm not looking in the rear view mirror and i really don't worry about what everybody says all i can tell you when you're at kentucky you got a lot of people for you and then you kind of got a lot of people against you it's just how it is yeah i had a segment earlier in the show john i called it you might be a douchebag and i think a lot of people out there listening had a couple of those people that are against you in mind listen 15 years ago coach k at duke uh went after four of the best players in the class of 97 i know you remember these guys elton brand shane battier william avery chris burgess he didn't i was covering duke at the time and i know he did not expect to get all four i mean he was stunned to get all four you just got a class that's even better than that i think i know the answer to this but are you at all stunned at what you've done who you've assigned well they did it amongst each other i mean you got kids that want it's like michael and and again when you tell me this class is better than michael anthony uh uh mark marcus teague and kyle wilshire we got to see now right that team won 38 games now well they had a couple veterans back well this team has a couple veterans back i mean you, you, you know you got to see but those guys wanted to play together and i think lebron and the guys have done a little bit of that to when coaches go in and 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 you don't want to play with him you want to be the focal point and you know anthony davis took the fifth most shots and michael took the fourth and we they were one and two in the draft so shots don't matter when you're here at this program you know it's it's what what we've got to convince them of more than anything else as the tide rises, every boat will rise. It is about coming together as a team and being the best team you can be, playing to your strengths, playing for one another. Um, you know, no one left behind. Here we go. Uh, covering for each other, doing all the things you need to do, being that, that type of teammate. Uh, and until I get them all here, I won't know. But I'll tell you this, the team we had in 212, that's what they were like. Now, here's the other thing that's happening. He'll never do that again. That was a one-time thing. Okay, <laughs> maybe, but we'll see. Right. Yeah. You know, you... I mean, I, it's, you know, because, again, I knew we weren't very good last year. I knew our guard play wasn't what it would need to be. I knew that the first game of the year. I mean, I could tell. Um, New Orleans goes down. I know where we're going. And this team still held together. And here's what I would say. This is the greatest thing about Players First program. When you talk about Players First, one – you're not blaming them. You're taking responsibility. You give them the glory when you win. But the other point of it is, however the season goes, they benefit. Did Nerlens benefit from this past year? He's going to go number one overall in the draft. I would say wow. he did. Wow. So wait a minute. We were an NIT team, and he got hurt. Did Willie benefit from this year? Yeah, he went from being who is that to being the next future NBA draft pick. Sure. Right. What about... Alex. Alex learned a lot about himself. If he put his name in the draft, would have still been a first-rounder. Wasn't ready, and he knew it. He came to that decision himself. What about Archie? Archie would have never been able to put his name in the draft if he had gone anywhere else. And we were a first-round NIT loser. You say, well, what did Kyle Wilshire learn? Kyle Wilshire learned a couple things. One, the way he played at Min- Min- uh, uh, Mississippi – we all saw signs of what it become, he can become. Late in the year, when everybody attacked him, he learned, i got to change my body. It was a great experience. Ryan learned, probably not the right place for me. How about Jared and John Hood? Did they benefit from last year? Yeah, they were, they were beloved. Yeah, they were loved. Who took, the, who took the hit? 
I did. I'm the head coach. Our team was a first-round NIT loser. They all benefited. That's what it means, players first. It doesn't mean we win and I get all the glory and, okay, you guys stay here. It means when we win big, you all get drafted. When we don't win big, you still, if you'll listen and work together – and do what you're supposed to do together, you'll still benefit. Now, around the country, the people know the names of your recruits, but there's one recruit that around the country they don't really know that well, but in this state they know very well, Dominique Hawkins. And he has said that he, he knew about this offer for a month before he announced, I'm going to Kentucky in mid-April. Are you surprised he was able to keep that a secret, that guy in this state, for that long? He's a, he's a, he's a pretty close-to-the-vest kind of kid and, and a great kid. I mean, I... I saw two state tournaments. They were down 16. Um, he deferred to his teammates until it was time, and then he took over games. And then he made baskets. He made shots. He made stops. He, when, when I watched him, what was driving me crazy is he was a football-playing point guard who could, with skills. In other words, he's the type of point guard I've coached. And he was a tough, hard-nosed, and I'm looking at it saying, you know what, he can play here. He can play here, and he'll be able to play here. And in the Sweet 16 at Rupp, the kid goes off, and you said you saw him in a couple. Does that mean, was he on your radar before that, or did he need to do that? Did he need to have that, that clutch performance to get on your radar to the level you're going to offer? Well, here's, here's what we had. Our, we had heard about him, um, and, and Doc Palmer up there, a dentist I go to, told me, you got to get up here. And Orlando went and watched him and said he's really good. And, and Mark Quise uh, that's his cousin. He kept walking in. Cal, you going to look at Dominique? And so when they did the state tournament, we had him on the radar. And when I saw him and I knew what we were going through ourselves yeah. right now, I was sold. Like, that's the kind of guy I've had in my program. <laughs> Those are the kind of kids that have had success here. Yeah, and he's um, going to be he's gonna be loved. And, Cal, what I did was I asked you a question with not enough time to go. And we got, we're, we've got a hard break coming up. We've got to get going. Thank you so much for making the show, giving it a the ending it deserved, a good one. Not better than the start. Thanks, are Cal. You, how many days are you on? Just one. One's more than we can all handle, but one's no, no, it. he's afraid. He's afraid. <laughs> <laughs> he wants no part of me. One day they're going to be asking for you back. Yeah, you're, but you know, you can sell. You could sell. I'll play for you any day of the week. Thanks for the call, Cal. I appreciate this.